So, let us try to give uh, some more uh, applications of this compactness. It says here is an important thing. See, if A is a non empty compact set, then we know it is bounded because it is closed and bounded. So, in particular, it is bounded. So, by the completeness property of real numbers, its greatest lower bound and least upper bound must exist. Right? That is only by boundedness, but compactness implies that those points least upper bound and greatest lower bound will be elements of that set if A is compact. This is a very important thing. Right? So, let us uh, try to prove that, okay? that um, greatest lower bound and least upper bound both are inside. Okay? So, let A be compact. When I do not write A, it could be an R n also, right? A in R or R n, any subset. Okay. Uh, A is compact. So, let us write A non empty, okay, because otherwise for empty set everything is okay. Uh, let alpha be equal to greatest lower bound of A. Alpha exists by completeness. property. Uh, okay, there is a slight uh, logical issue, because what is completeness for R and I have not discussed actually. Let us keep it on the real line for time being. I can define it, but I think I do not see much point of you knowing that. One can define what is called completeness property for R n. Let us not go into that. So, let us keep this A is compact, A subset of real line. Let us do it only for the real line, okay? so that we do not have to bother about much. So, claim alpha belongs to A. We want to claim that alpha must belong to A. Now, this is very simple and it is very uh, uh, it just depends on what is the definition of here is my alpha, which is the greatest lower bound. That means what? All the elements of the set A are on the right side of alpha, right? Alpha is the greatest lower bound, it is a lower bound and the greatest of them. So, everything else is on the right side, right? Now, definition of it says that if I for every epsilon bigger than 0, if I look at alpha plus epsilon, that will be a point on the right side. Can that be an upper bound for A? Can alpha plus epsilon be an upper bound for A? Alpha is the least upper bound, uh, uh, alpha is the greatest lower bound. So, can something bigger than alpha be a lower bound? No, other than definition of greatest lower bound is contradictory. That means what? That means between alpha and alpha plus epsilon, there must be a point of the set A, because I want alpha plus epsilon should not be a lower bound. So, there must be a point on the left side of it. So, there must be a point. So, implies there exists some point, so let us call it x epsilon such that alpha less than x epsilon less than alpha plus epsilon. So, there must be a point here x epsilon and that x epsilon should belong to the set A. There must be a point of that, otherwise it cannot will contradict. This is the crucial thing, this is the definition of right. See, uh, I, at one point I had said that if you want to understand what is true, then you should also understand what is false. Right. So, it is a negation or the definition whichever way you like, alpha plus epsilon cannot be least upper bound, uh, greatest uh, lower bound. So, 
there must come something inside. So, whenever you want to understand what is true, you should also look at what is negation of that statement, what is false to understand that. So, I am going to now, so this is definition and what is given to me? A is compact and how is compactness defined? In terms of sequences and convergent subsequences, right? So, from here I should try to produce some sequence somehow or the other, right? And then go to a subsequence and convergent inside the set using compactness. So, how can I produce a sub a sequence by using this fact? We and I want it to be convergent. So, the obvious thing is take this is true for every epsilon. So, specialize epsilon equal to 1 over n. Specialize epsilon equal to. So, in particular, so we write in particular. For epsilon equal to 1 by n, there exists some x n such that x n belongs to A and alpha less than x n less than alpha plus 1 by n for every n, right? Because something is happening for every epsilon, so I have specialized it to epsilon equal to 1 over n. Is it okay? I have gotten a sequence now x n and that sequence x n is between alpha and alpha plus 1 over n. So, can I say sequence is convergent? Yes, convergent where? To alpha. So, note x n belongs to A, x n converges to alpha. Uh, what does compact till now we have not used any compactness or anything, right? We have only used the definition of alpha. Now, compactness says that this must have a convergent subsequence, subsequence converging in the set, but the limit is alpha and the sequence itself is convergent. That implies alpha must be inside A because sequence has a subsequence which is convergent, but that subsequence will converge only to the same limit as the sequence converging and that is alpha. So, by compactness alpha must belong to A. So, by compactness or if you like uh, x n is a sequence converging to alpha, A is closed. So, limit must be inside. You can shortcut using the fact that compactness means closed and bounded implies alpha belongs to A because A compact equivalent to closed plus bounded if you like, either way you can write. So, what we have done? You see till now, till this point, what I have done is if alpha is greatest lower bound of a set, then there is a sequence converging to it. Till this point, we have not used anything, only definition. So, if a number alpha is greatest over bound, there must be a sequence converging to of the set elements of that set for which you are taking the greatest over bound converging to alpha. In fact, something more I can do, I can make this sequence x n a monotonically decreasing sequence. I can specialize it because I can always choose something on the other side. If it does not work, I go to the next number and go to the next one. Because if once I have chosen x 1 between x 1 and alpha, there must be an element of the set because x 1 cannot be. So, there may be x 2 bigger than x 1. Similarly, x 3 and so on. You can go on doing such kind of things. So, you can improve this, but this is very nice and important thing that if in terms of sequences, right, that if alpha is greatest over bound, then there is a sequence of elements of the set converging to that alpha. And compactness says this must belong to the set. So, alpha belongs to A. So, this proves that if alpha is least upper bound, oh sorry, if alpha is greatest over bound, then it belongs to the set. 
same property true for least upper bound. Why? Will be on the other side. Only you will be instead of waving your the on the right side everything. Now you will be saying everything on the left side. So if beta is least upper bound, then beta minus epsilon cannot be least upper bound. So there must be something inside. So take epsilon equal to one over n again. So alpha minus one over n will be doing and same analysis you will do, right? Okay. So this uh, proves. The theorem that if uh, it is a compact set, then greatest lower bound and least upper bound are elements of that set. This will be useful later on when you want to maximize and minimize functions. In many situations, your functions will have domain which is compact, and the functions will be continuous. I have not really defined, but all of you know continuity and so on. Then you will get. That the range is compact, and hence upper bound and function must have a right. The range must have a least upper bound and greatest lower bound, and that must belong. So that says that will give you a theorem for continuous functions. Every continuous function must attain its bounded, and must attain its maxima and minima. So that will come in calculus later on. Okay. So compact sets are defined as sets. In terms of sequences, we are defining every sequence in that set has a subsequence which is convergent in the set. That is compactness. Using that, we said every compact set must be closed and bounded. That is one. Second, if a set is compact, then uh, very uh, uh, interesting and uh, application of that is that it is bounded. So. Greatest lower bound and least upper bound exists as a real line, so they must be attained. That means they are in the set itself, right? For like an open interval zero one, the greatest uh, lower bound is zero, but that is not part of the set, right? Similarly, least upper bound of open interval zero one is one, but that is not inside the set, and that is because open interval zero one is not compact. We know that, right? Here. So let us look at some more uh, properties of this. So there is a, another way of defining compactness, uh, which uh, uh, which finds uh, okay why we should be doing this at all. See, there is something you should be doing that because it is a part of slavers, right? But there are some things which why it is a part of slavers because there is some other reason for that. The reason for looking at something called a cover of a set is that in this way, we'll using uh, we'll define what is called a open cover of a set and define some properties of compact sets in terms of this, and then that will make it independent of sequences and such things. And there are spaces where you can define compactness where there are no notion of a sequence. But compactness becomes important. Okay, so uh, I'll probably indicate it later on. So let us just uh, look at for the time being that it is mandatory for us to know what is a covering and uh, how compactness is defined in terms of. It is important. So what does the English word cover mean? It should cover, right? What else it could be? So we want to say, given a set, there is something that covers. So if A is a subset of B, then you'll say B covers A. But in general, one set may not cover another one; may not be subset. But there may be a collection of sets; their union covers that given set. Then we say this collection is called a cover for the given set. So a set theory purely: a collection of say here it is G alpha of subsets uh, of R n is called a cover for A. If A is inside the union, it covers. If each G alpha is open, then we say it is an open cover for A, right? We are specializing cover by sets. That is a cover. And if I can say each G alpha is open, then we say it is a open cover for A. Let us look at some examples uh, of this. You can manufacture many. For example. Uh, If I take the open interval zero one and look at 
0 comma 1 minus 1 over n 0 to half right minus 0 minus 1 by 3 so that is increasing right I am making that point slowly increasing and increasing their union will be the open interval 0 1 is that ok union of open interval 0 to 0 comma 1 minus 1 over n forms a cover of the interval 0 1 right because it is starting at 0 ending at 1 over 1 minus 1 over n so slowly it is becoming going to the right and right so every point of 0 1 sometime or the other will be inside on the left side of 1 minus 1 over n is that ok is it clear because 1 over n goes to 0 so 1 minus 1 over n goes to 1 so it is increasing to the right side so this will be a cover and each is an open set is an open interval so this is an open cover of 0 1 okay some other examples are given so look at 1 to infinity then you can look at 0 to infinity is an open set which covers it right is an open interval so open cover of it and so on there are many examples you can construct to yourself many more okay i am just giving you some to get an idea of open so here is a very important property is called the hein borel theorem it is for the real line okay we are looking at it says an a closed bounded interval a b is given and you are given an open cover of this okay by open sets j i i is an uh, interval that is a b and there is a covering of i by open sets j j belonging to some collection okay some collection of in open sets cover it claim that we do not need a full cover there is a finite number of them so that that means there exists j1 j2 j n such that i is contained in this finite union only so from a arbitrary collection you have come down to a finite sub collection which covers it is a very important thing you understand what i was saying given any arbitrary open cover of the closed bounded interval a b there is a finite sub cover of it there is a finite sub collection of the given collection which covers it right and this goes by the name heine borel theorem so let us try to prove this theorem okay now the idea of the proof is rather simple so let me let me try to uh, give you the idea and then prove it so what we are given given i equal to a b is inside union of j j belonging to some collection s j open each j is open implies there exists j1 j2 j n such that i is contained in union of j i i equal to 1 to n given any open cover cover of a closed bounded interval by open sets there is a finite sub cover there is a finite sub collection which is enough to cover it you do not have to do all so let us write the proof so here is my a and here is my b so the idea of the proof is i start with the point a and go to a nearby point say x and look at this interval a x look at a part of the interval a b starting from a close interval a to x possibility is a to x is covered by finitely many members of that given collection this interval which is a sub interval part of a b has the property that a to x has a finite sub cover or it may not have it may or it may not right so the idea is try to collect such points and show that they have a largest element and that is b 
So, A to B will have a finite sub cover. So, idea is let us construct let A be the set of all x belonging to A B such that A to x has finite sub cover. What is our aim to show? B is an element of this set. Aim is to show that B belongs to it, right? Because if B belongs, A to B will have a finite subcover, will be through. So, we are reformulating the problem in some way so that we can get a hold of it. This set A, so note, this set A is non empty set. Why it is non empty? That means, what I have to show? There is at least one element of x between A and B which belongs to this set A, right? I can take x equal to A itself. For example, A belongs to A. A comma A, x is equal to A. So, it is a closed interval A comma A. It is part of A B and it is only a single point. So, I can pick up any element in the cover, open cover, right. One is, one element is enough to say that A comma A is covered by a open set J. Is that okay? Only one is enough, why finite? Only one is enough for the singleton. Is that okay? Because A comma, the point A belongs to the interval A B, okay, because a belongs to A B is contained in union of J, J belonging to S. So, what does it imply? A belongs to J for some J, right? Because it belongs to this, this is inside the union. So, A has to belong to one of them, pick up any one you like. So, implies A comma A is inside J. So, interval A comma A has a finite sub cover. So, A belongs to the set A. So, it is non empty. So, that is a first observation. Second, A is bounded above. It is bounded above. Why it is bounded above? Where are the elements x? You are picking up elements of the interval a b. So, x cannot be bigger than b. They are all inside a b. So, they are bounded above by b. Okay, it is bounded above by b. So, we have got a non empty set which is bounded above implies l u b of a, call it alpha, exists. L u b exists, right. By the completeness property of real numbers, it is a non empty set which is bounded above. So, L u b must exist. Note, alpha is between a and b, because what is alpha? B is an upper bound, right? B is an upper bound. So, least upper bound cannot be bigger than B. It has to be less than or equal to B. And all elements are bigger than A. So, this is between A and B. Alpha is between A and B. Claim that alpha is equal to B. That will prove the theorem. this will prove will that prove also because if a is equal to b then a comma b will have finite sub cover so i have to only show that this this upper bound so look at the picture that's what i said that a to x has got a finite cover a finite sub cover pick up all these x's and try to take the largest possible x with that property. 
and we try to show the largest possible is has to be b it cannot be something smaller so a to b will have a finite sub cover so that is the only thing to show that it has okay so let us uh, prove that and most often than not such proofs go by contradiction so suppose alpha is strictly less than b so here is the picture a here is b and here is my alpha here is my alpha claim that alpha is less than b that is the assumption we will try to prove a contradiction that it cannot be strictly less it has to be equal to b okay now if it is strictly less than b then it is in the interval ab then it is in the interval ab and ab is covered by those open sets j so alpha will belong to one of the j's right so let me uh, just draw a picture so here is my something this is my j this yellow one is uh, okay <laughs> this looks very bad so this yellow one is j that is a open set is it okay because ab is covered by j's open sets j's right and alpha is inside ab so alpha will belong to one of them if it belongs to one of them it is an open set so there will be open interval which will include alpha so call it as something c to d so what i am saying is there is a open interval c to d which includes alpha okay now if this open interval includes it then there must be a some point beta on the right side of alpha right there are many but there is at least one and on the left side c to alpha alpha is least upper bound of all those axes so there must be an x belonging to a there must be an x belonging to a which is on the left side of alpha because alpha is the least upper bound of those axes right is it okay now look at the interval a to x x belongs to a so finite number of j's will cover a to x and this beta is covered by c to d which is inside j this c to d this c to d is inside j j was an open set so one more j if i include that covers beta also so that means from a to beta is covered by finite number of j's because a to x is covered because x is in a so by the definition of a a to x is covered and beta belongs to c to d which is inside a j so if i take that j also earlier finite plus one more they cover alpha to a to beta but beta is bigger than alpha beta is bigger than alpha and we said alpha is the least upper bound of those which are covered by finitely many and we have found another something bigger than alpha which is beta which has the same property that means beta must belong to a that is not possible because alpha is the least upper bound of a that is a contradiction simply nothing more so probably i'll repeat it next time but it is very easy to understand and alpha is the least upper bound okay so assume alpha is less than b so this alpha must belong to one of the j's and alpha is an open set so you must have a open interval including that point inside so c to d is the open interval including alpha right on the right side pick up any point beta on the left there has to be a point of a because alpha is least upper bound so a to x is covered x to beta is covered by this so this finitely many cover a to beta that is a contradiction to the fact that alpha is least upper bound of this and that proves the theorem so probably i'll repeat it next time again the proof very simple nice proof so what we are saying is 
that close bounded interval A to B has the property every open cover has got a finite sub cover. And next lecture we will prove the converse is also true in the sense that for a compact set this is one of the equivalent ways of saying uh, every open cover has a finite sub cover. Okay.